What's up America? This is Kim with Geauga Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. We often hear people say that they can't rack the slide and in most cases that's not true. So today we're going to talk about some techniques and methods to help you rack the slide of a pistol. So let's get started. To start, some guns are easier to rack than others. So here we have the shield uh, along with the 43 and the XDS. They're some of the smallest and most popular carry guns around. They're also some of the hardest to rack. They have a much heavier spring. They also have a low mass slide and a lot less surface area to grip. So here we have most people. They have the gun. They usually have it way out here and then they put their hand on top and they're trying to pull this back and while they're doing it, this wrist is going back and they're fighting it because it takes a lot of grip strength to do it this way. One thing we tell people is you can extend your arm out you're going to be using your structural alignment here. And then instead of trying to fight the gun and using your, your weaker arm to, to try to pull this back, we're going to use our strong arm to push forward. It's going to give us a lot more strength that way. So you can either hold on to the back of it like this or you can just hold on to the top. But the most important thing you need to remember is the serrations right here. That's going to give you a lot of grip. So that's where you want to hold on. So I'm holding on. I can push forward. I'm pushing forward with my strong arm and I have a lot more strength that way. So you can see the difference between the shield and the Glock 19. This is a single stack, a smaller gun. This is a little bit larger. You have a lot less surface area for you to grab onto where I was talking about where the serrations are. So this is going to make it a lot harder to grip. And that's why this is a little bit harder to rack. The next technique we're going to talk about is the bear hug. So this is if you know you tried the other method and it really didn't work, but there's some really important things to remember when you're doing this. The key to this technique is getting it nice and close to your body. So if we have it out here and we're really trying, we're using a lot more strength. If I bring it in, I have a lot more leverage. So I'm able to just bring it together. I can rack all day. And the reason why this works is you're using your upper body, your big muscles to, to rack the slide instead of fighting it way out here. There are a few things that are very important when you're doing this. First thing is that you want to keep your finger out of this porthole. So you need to make sure that you're not putting your hand there because that you're not going to have a good day if you do that. Another thing is if you're doing this, let's say you're shooting straight on and then now you're going to reload. Uh, if you're standing in a lane or there's people next to you, they're not going to appreciate you pointing your gun at them. So you're going to have to turn your body so you keep your gun in a safe direction. And if those two techniques don't work for you, then this last one, if you're able to shoot a gun, you're able to do this one. So what you want to do is first things first is you always want to make sure you have nice rear sights. They need to be metal. They need to have a nice combat edge because what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to, and you're going to rack it against the table. So you're going to use all your body weight to press it down. And if you're able to shoot a gun, you're able to use that pressure and you'll be able to rack it as well. Not all guns are equal. Some guns are easier to rack than others. So when we're purchasing a pistol, we want to think about what we're going to use it for and also make sure that we can rack it. For example, if you take, as I was showing earlier, the shield and I try to take my two fingers and just rack it, it's a lot harder to rack than if, let me take my 1911. I can just take two fingers and rack this thing all day. You can see that there's a lot less effort in going into that. Here we have like a medium sized one. You can see this is even much easier to rack than the shield. One mistake we see a lot of new shooters make when they rack the slide is that they treat this like it's a delicate baby. You gotta, they, they take it and they rack it and they gently let it slide back into place. And we don't want to ride the slide because the gun is meant to function with you letting go and letting it slingshot forward. This slide is designed to go full force forward. There's nothing that's going to break. It's meant to work that way. And those who shoot a lot know that if you are riding it forward and going really slow, you're going to probably have a lot of malfunctions. Now, before you go out and buy the smallest gun for concealed carry, because maybe this looks a little bit more, less intimidating, you're going to want to start off with a more full size gun to learn the fundamentals and also learn to manipulate the gun. All right, you guys, I want to come in here for just a minute because I get this a lot all the time, right? Uh, in conversations and training and whatnot. Someone will say, oh my, whoever, fill in the blank, can't rack a slide, so I'm gonna buy them a, and by the way, stop buying guns for people, bring the person in, let them buy the gun with you if you have any knowledge whatsoever. That's the worst thing ever. Anyway, I'm gonna buy a revolver for them, right? It's usually granny, right? We're gonna buy a revolver for granny because granny can't rack the slide. This gun is not special. Like most revolvers, they hold five, six, maybe seven if you're lucky. This one is six, okay? And the reason, okay, think about this, that you're buying this gun supposedly for Granny because she can't rack the slide is because you're assuming that after six rounds, Granny's going to reload this gun and use it again. 
Now let's think about this for a minute. Well, little granny's there uh, sleeping, watching TV, doing her thing, and somebody breaks into the house. What you're honestly telling me, which I highly doubt granny's out there on the weekends doing tactical training, that she's going to pull this gun out, shoot it six times, run out of ammo, and then she's going to actuate the cylinder, drop those rounds out. She's going to take her, what, her, what, her speed strip or her uh, speed loader, and she's going to put in six, five more rounds, put them in the holes, line them up, get it back in and shoot. Are you serious? S to get just yet another six rounds. Now think about this. Or... We could buy Granny just a regular pistol, like a 1917 M&P SIG, you name it, right? How many rounds are in there? Well, we got uh, 18 rounds, right? So let's do the math here. If I have six to equal one of these without ever reloading, I've got to reload this multiple times. And let's just assume that Granny can't rack the slide. Who cares? So you go give this gun to Granny. We rack the slide, she puts it in her little lock box, wherever she's going to keep it, and then if she needs the gun, she's going to take it out, and she's got her 18 rounds. By the way, if that's not enough, and you're really worried about her not being able to reload, problem solved, right? Okay, so the point of this whole deal is Granny's not going to ever need to reload anyway. And by the way, if she fires off 18, 20 rounds in the house, she's going to make front page news somewhere, okay? so. Just because a person can't rack the slide, we have to take in context of where they're using this gun. It's probably some type of self-defense scenario, in which case we're not really worried about reloading a revolver multiple times. We're worried about having a good quality gun that will run through the magazine that she can use if she needs it. Okay, so no more nonsense about, well, just because they can't rack the gun, we're going to buy automatically a revolver. Odds are they can't rack the gun, and if in case it's not, it's a little old granny at home, Still go with a pistol. Now, Kim made me add this one point. This is not an anti-revolver deal. This is uh, just because you're going to buy your girlfriend a gun, don't automatically assume that she can't wreck the slide. We're just going to buy her because she's a chick uh, a revolver because that's absolutely ridiculous. We hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like it, share it, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We always appreciate that. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and also click that little bell so that you get notified every time we put a video out. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and of course we put all of our premium content on Patreon. I have the Can Can Concealment uh, Hip Hugger Holster video coming up soon, so if there's any ladies interested in some different carry options, make sure you stay tuned for that. Until next time, remember, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.